Well, there are many methods of treating a fracture calcaneum. There are many people who would prefer that we treat a fractured calcaneum by putting the limb into the best functional position. But there is another school of thought, they think that we should use plates, screws for it. I think it just depends upon the facilities you have available and the background of the patient. We must keep it in mind that patients who are diabetic generally would end up with infection of the operated area. And whenever a patient comes to you with complications, it is always wise to do comparison with the normal side. Comparison on inspection, comparison on palpation, comparison of movements. Almost all, almost all the joints can be compared comparatively in any situation. Similarly, not only compare on clinical examination, palpation, movements, but also compare radiologically. You can take the x-ray of both the feet together, X lateral view of both the uh, heel and the foot together, and even axial view of the, both the calcania can be done in one go. And once we have, once we are sure of what it is, being a cancerous bone, if there are no sequestra, as a rule, they would heal. But if there is a sequestrum, one will have to remove the sequestrum. If it is a large cavity left behind, may be wise to put in a bone graft. But small cavities generally fill up of their own by repair of the cancerous bone. Most of the cancerous bone heal fairly well without bone grafting. But if the cavity is too large, one may put in a autologous bone graft. Young fellow who has presented with a swelling around the heel and the ankle joint. Uh, the history goes, just to make it small, he had a fall for which he was operated. They had put in a plate and what he tells you is uh, that on the, there was a fracture of the heel bone. Unfortunately, plate got infected and that plate was ultimately removed. When the plate was removed, because there was a lot of skin loss, so the surgeon did perform a pedicled skin graft. One can see the pedicled skin graft here and if you ask the patient, he tells you that the graft was removed from the opposite thigh. Despite all this labor, there is a persistent sinus. Once you find a persistent sinus, especially in uh, tuberculous endemic areas, one should see if this persistent sinus has undermined edges and gently just try to push in a blunt instrument around the lips of the ulcer. I did try but I don't, I, I find that they, there is nothing like an undermined edges. If you find an undermined edges of the ulcer, that is a very strong point in favor that probably the infection is tuberculous in nature. Here you can see a depressed um, scar, almost one centimeter into one and a half centimeter. The floor is covered with a whitish scar tissue. There is a thinish, thin watery discharge coming out of it. And it, if the margins do not show the undermining, the diagnosis would be chronic osteomyelitis or the bone underneath with a persistent sinus. In such a situation, we must do an x-ray. X-ray, ideally we should, as far as possible, ideally we should do an x-ray comparing the normal and the injured side. So we'll ask for an x-ray, AP of both feet together, lateral of both feet together, and if possible, an axial view of both the heels together. Fortunately, when we ask him to do the movements of the ankle joint, there is reasonably good movements of the ankle joint. Isko aap upar le jayenge, niche kar dije, phir upar, phir niche, relax. Agar itna, if there is such a good range of movement of the ankle joint, which means probably the ankle joint is not involved per se by the infection. The infection is predominantly in the calcaneum and subtaloid joint. It is, the ankle joint is free. And these, when we do the x-rays, 
ideally we should do the x-ray of both the knees both the feet together we will be able to find which bone is essentially involved if possible one should palpate for regional lymph node in this particular patient there is no no palpable lymph node if palpable lymph nodes are available then also one can take the tissue from those lymph nodes for submitting it for histology microbiology and if possible serology an x-ray would be useful for us to make a decision what is to be the next step to be done